price of freedom is death. We are coming to get our check. Black first, my brothers and my sisters, welcome to the Afro Elite YouTube channel. I'm your host, Afro Elite. Before we get started, please make sure that you guys hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, share button, all of that helps the reach and the growth of the channel. For everything you all do, thank you very much. Now, last year, there was the story that broke out in Laverne, Texas, of a former police officer named Megan Hall. And Megan Hall was, you know, doing a lot at work with a lot of people. She was with her police colleagues, and they had a rather unprofessional relationship. And due to all of her overtime and all of her hard work, no pun intended, um, you know, she wound up getting exposed, the whole situation. It was a story. And then all of them wound up being fired or suspended. Now she's come back and sued for something, sued for the fact that she was taken advantage of, according to her lawsuit, and now she has been rewarded half a million dollars. Yes, that's right, half a million dollars. She got half a million dollars. So we're going to look into the case. We're going to find out exactly what happened, how she got it, and we're going to give our commentary on it. It says, Cop Gone Wild, 28-year-old, will get $500,000 payday after suing City, claiming she was sexually groomed by her predator supervisor after she was fired for sex romps with seven officers. Tennessee cop gone wild. Megan Hall settled her lawsuit with the city of Laverne for $500,000 after she was fired when an internal probe revealed her raunchy romps with six male officers that involved games of strip uno and foot fetish photos. The 28-year-old, she was only 28, was fired in January 2023 after it was first discovered that she had sexual relationships with several officers in a suburban Nashville department, some who have been terminated, others suspended. Now, we're going to get into why some was terminated and then why others were suspended, despite the fact that they were all doing the same thing. They're going to bring that up a little bit later. It continues to say the rookie cop hit back in a federal lawsuit claiming she was groomed and abused by lecherous supervisors. Lecherous means someone who's like essentially thirsty for sex and they tend to act on it like very perverted pretty much. It says including police chief Burl Chip Davis and Sergeant Lewis Powell, a 15 year law enforcement veteran. The half a million settlement includes court costs, attorney fees, and expenses paid out by the city's insurance. So the half a million dollars also includes that stuff too. So it's not half a million dollars and she has to pay for court or she has to pay for the attorneys. She's getting half a million dollars in pocket, in her pocket. And then they still have to pay for everything else. So the attorney's fees is being covered according to this. Um, the court costs and all of the expenses paid by the city for, I mean, whatever that could be, all of that is being cost. That's what they're saying. It includes that. The Laverne board voted three to one in a special meeting in favor of settling the lawsuit. The agreement was negotiated between attorneys representing the city and Hall. A statement from the board said, the city denies any admission of liability and no taxpayer funds will be spent to settle this lawsuit. Laverne launched an internal inquiry late last year after a whistleblower came forward to report a female cop, Megan Hall, was having intimate relationships with multiple male colleagues and even on police property. Now, what's interesting about this is wait till you find out how the whistleblower found out about this situation. I'm going to show you that in a clip later, or an audio clip later. It continues to say, in the course of the investigation, it emerged that Hall was having sex with multiple fellow officers, including Officer Lewis Powell, and they had carried out sex acts while on duty. So while, while on duty, that means that the taxpayers in Tennessee are paying taxes for folks to have sex, essentially. That's really what it is, because these people are out here 
doing this stuff while i mean if it was off duty whatever now mind you she is married she's married i'm not sure if the other officers are married but it's wrong for them to be doing that but even still that would be their business if it was off duty but now the taxpayers are paying money there are crimes being committed things that could be being investigated they're always complaining i want you guys to keep this in mind they're always complaining about man we need more police and the police are leaving and we don't have enough manpower for police and nobody helps the police and we need to give them more funds are these the type of police you want to give more funds to are these the type of police that you want to give more funds to because every time i look at it i don't see police doing outstanding police work while you're talking about oh they just need so much help and the job is just so difficult and you don't understand the sacrifices that they make all of the stuff that they tell us about police does it look like these people are out here doing all that i mean they're putting in a lot of work but there is not police work it's another type of work is she putting it in right she she doing overtime triple time double time the holidays no day off vacations all that but it ain't police work she's doing but this is what the taxpayers are paying for while you have a whole bunch of people be all like how could you defund police you know all of these crimes are going to go rampant well these crimes are going to go rampant because the police are in the back room getting it on these police aren't investigating anything aren't patrolling anything so either they're out here terrorizing the citizens or in the, they're in the back room, you know, doing doing what they do. So this makes all police, in my opinion, look real bad. It makes them all do. Continues to say, while interviewed in the investigation, Hall said she played games of strip uno, exchange foot fetish photos, and played out wife swapping sessions with fellow officers. So, I mean, apparently they do have wives and apparently she was in it with them too. So it was, it was a whole, I mean, I guess they say, you know, police are like a family. So she kept it in the family. It was, it was a whole family thing it, with the exception of her husband. Cause he didn't know about it. They knew about it and their wives knew about it. And they were sitting up there having their wives participate and their illegal actions there this is this is this is despicable it really is and it is just nasty it really it really really is let's continue during one interview about the affair hall said i got stupid i got depressed i guess and guys are guys and they'll stick their private in anything I mean, if you let them, which you did, I got stupid, I got depressed, I guess. And guys are guys, so they'll stick there. This is the level of maturity coming out of that woman. This is the level of maturity that's coming out of the police in Tennessee, in Laverne, Tennessee. This, this is what we have there. Continues to say, while discussing her affair with Powell, she said at one point they had carried out sex acts on police property. She said, I gave him a BJ. I ain't even going to say that. I gave him a BJ. You can read it there. In the substation. In the police substation, y'all. Have these people no shame? These, this is, this is thuggish behavior. This is fatherless behavior what is wrong with their culture something is wrong with their culture of depravity and of fatherlessness these this is crime of the highest thuggest degree i can't believe it i am ashamed of this action in the substation police have no shame they have no shame continues to say me and my husband, oh yeah, remember I told you she was married. Me and my husband were kind of on the verge of a divorce and I just cracked and then it just got kind of out of hand. I can't imagine why her and her husband would be on the verge of divorce. I just can't imagine. I mean, she, her husband's definitely missing out. She seems like such a faithful lady. I can't imagine why they would be getting such a divorce. What, what, what could be the cause of such things? And you say that um, 
she cracked. So she just kind of cracked because they were getting a divorce. So she was all like, I'm just going to be with any man within a five mile radius. Sir, you dodged the bullet. You dodged the bullet with that one. If you, because it's not like she's divorced or anything like that. So just being on the verge of a divorce, if she out there um, doing with doing all that at the police station on duty, you dodged the bullet. You dodged the bullet. Do you, you ma'am? I'm sure you can kind of wonder why the divorce commenced. I don't even know what he did. I can almost guarantee you were the problem. It continues to say. Powell initially denied the relationship, but later admitted to it, claiming in the latest lawsuit that then police chief Davis had told him to lie at first. The probe led to both Hall and Powell, as well as parole officer Juan Lugo, detectives Sienna Shields, Sergeant T.Y. McGowan, and eventually even the police chief Davis, who initially led the inquiry all losing their jobs. So everybody got in, even the police chief. These are the people supposed to be upholding the law. And it's several names getting involved. And I get, I, I'm promising you this right now. It is not a rare thing. This happens all of the time. Continuing, McGowan was the source of the original whistleblower tip received by Laverne Mayer jason cole's office patrol officer patrick mcgillicu if i'm mispronouncing it i'm don't mean to canine officer larry holiday and patrol officer gavin schoolber these are some very interesting names these are very very unique and interesting names i've not seen these last names i mean some of them are common like davis and all that but yeah these are some very interesting names but it says who all traded naked pictures of Hall were also suspended. So it's not even these officers she's been sexually engaged with. It's the whole department, even the ones who didn't actually get a piece of her. They still got some piece through pictures. And these are the only ones they caught. Keep that in mind. These are the ones they caught. That means damn near everybody in the department has seen this woman butt naked. Everybody in the department has seen this woman butt naked. She's going there and she, they just having their way with her. And she and she's putting in the work to do it. All this, I'm, I've been groomed, ma'am. Okay, but we'll, we'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. It says, in the aftermath, ha Hall claimed that she had been sexually groomed by her predator supervisor that tried to delete himself. I can't say certain words, but, you know, he tried to off himself. She filed her own lawsuit earlier this year, claiming that Sergeant Powell positioned himself as a reliable source of companionship and advice regarding Miss Hall's career and her marriage. Yeah, I mean, advice for their marriage. No, okay. Advice for their marriage. He was given the companionship. He was not given great marriage advice. The lawsuit said Sergeant Powell persisted in request for sex despite Miss Howell's resistance. Okay. Eventually, Miss Howell gave in to Sergeant Powell's request for sexual favors. Oh, oh, see, we're gonna get into. We're gonna talk about this a little bit later. Continues to say. But she said when she tried to stop that Powell threatened to delete himself, the lawsuit reads, Sergeant Powell was crying and told Miss Howell he drank an entire bottle of Jack Daniels whiskey. He threatened to delete himself, told Miss Hall, you did this to me and asserted that Miss Hall was responsible for his imminent self-deletion. I can't say that word, but imminent self-deletion. So. He pressured her, is what they're saying. He pressured her, and he kept asking and kept asking and nagging and nagging and nagging, and she just gave in to him. This is what the lawsuit is saying. She gave in to him, and then for however long they were doing that, 
she she decided to to stop and she didn't want to do it anymore and then he said that he was going to take himself out of this world because she didn't want to continue doing that and he said he drank an entire bottle of Jack Daniel's Hennessy so did he have to say that every time or was it just like that one time you're like, I don't want to do it anymore. He's like, well, I drank a whole bottle and I'm going to crash out. She's like, okay, well, never mind. I'll never bring it up again. Like, did he have to threaten to drink a whole bottle of Jack Daniels and, and jump off a roof every single time? I, I mean, does this really sound like this is, this is what happened, but it gets crazier than this. Let's listen. Let's listen. It continues to say, Hall said the exploitative relationship with Powell was what led to other sexual encounters involving other officers. Oh, so let me ask you, did, so her relationship with him, now mind you, she wanted to stop. That's what the lawsuit is saying. She wanted to stop, and he said he was going to delete himself. He was going to unalive himself if she stopped. So him being with her, and this, this sexual relationship was the only thing keeping him alive because she had to have believed that he was going to do it according to the lawsuit. She had to have seriously believed that he was on the verge of unaliving himself, which is what made her continue to do that. And then she said that led to other relationships with all of the other officers that she was with. So that begs the question, did all of the officers threatened to delete themselves and unalive themselves is that is that what it was or was he all like if you don't do this with my friends then i'm going to end myself how because you're saying you did it to protect his life so how did all these other officers get involved because she said she said the relationship led to other encounters ma'am okay he pressured you so what he went around being all the man, she's going to do whatever you say. All you got to do is say you drank a bottle of uh, Jack Daniels Hennessy or whiskey. That's all you got to do. He, he that, that was the rumor around the locker room. And then after break, all of them started drinking whiskey and being all like, I'm going to end it all. And then she's like, don't worry, I'm going to get on my knees right now to save you. Is that is that what she did? Because I'm not really seeing. How if she was so restricted and, and so reluctant to do this and didn't want to do this, how did this lead from one officer who, quote unquote, initiated it? She's saying he initiated it and pressured her into it. How did this lead from one officer doing that to now several officers getting involved in doing that? And y'all won't believe how she got caught. I'm going to tell y'all that later. But. I want to see if she was reluctant from doing it, if she wasn't complicit and she didn't enjoy it and she didn't want to do it anymore. I want to know what was what, because there's clearly a big gap of information of how it was just Powell. And now it's all of these other officers and eventually the police chief. There's a pretty big gap of information that they're conveniently skipping past. Let's continue. She also claimed in the suit that police chief Chip Davis was no better than his subordinates, inviting Hall on lunch dates, asking her to come to his office to dance for him and questioning whether she preferred dark, white, or milk chocolate. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. I wonder what she answered because I know she do like chocolate. She 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 like herself some chocolate. I wonder what that answer was because I know she answered that question. It says it later emerged that Davis shared explicit videos of Hall and made sexist comments on a burner phone he named Old oh Boy. Davis fiend surprised as he oversaw the internal inquiry into the scandal. But the court filings obtained by DailyMail.com revealed that Davis knew all about the events before the inquiry and had even pestered one of his sergeants to send him video of Hall 
pleasuring herself. Okay. Now, I want you to keep this in mind. She's claiming that she was only, she, she was pressured into doing this. And then she wanted to stop because, you know, she's a very faithful wife and she believes in the sanctity of marriage. She wanted to stop. But it was Powell who said, I drank a whole bottle of alcohol and you don't know what I'm going to do. And you did this to me. And if I do it, it'll be on your conscience and I'll haunt you as a ghost for the rest of your days. So she was like, no, please, I'll do whatever I need to do. So she continued. And then for whatever reason, all these other officers got involved. But how is there a video of her pleasing herself? She has a video of her pleasing herself. Uh, that means you took that video, ma'am. That means you were the one who was touching what you wanted to touch. That's, that's what that means. So you, it, it sounds more and more that you was all in on this. You was knee deep. It was knee down and knee deep and all of this stuff. That's what it's looking like. It continues to say, in the latest lawsuit, Powell accused Davis of instructing him to lie about his relationship with Hall during the investigation and deny that anything had even occurred at all. Ma'am, and these are the people that Tennessee is paying their taxes. These people are being paid by taxpayers. Taxpayers are paying them to do all of this stuff. So when people make the argument, well, police need way more money and police job is such a hard job and it's such a sacrifice and it's just so strenuous and you don't understand what these people go through. I, I'm going to tell you right now, I, I don't understand what these people go through. I cannot relate to all this stuff on the workforce. Now, I can't relate to this. I've worked at some crazy places, but I can't relate to all of what this is. What this is, I've seen a scandal or two. I ain't seen this. This crazy, and all of this on taxpayer dime, on duty, which is why the investigation is commencing in the first place. Because if this was off duty, you know nobody would say be saying anything about it, except her husband if he ever found out. But. The, the fact that this was on duty makes it a, a, a crime. All right. Or. If, well, even if arguably not a crime like illegal, people can argue it's illegal. It's definitely something that's fireable. It's definitely against police policy. Continues to say throughout the year 2022, Officer Hall slept around with a number of police officers, the lawsuit reads. The suit also claims that Hall then had a mental breakdown and Laverne Mayor Jason Cole found out that she had been sleeping with multiple officers and decided to get to the bottom of the situation and uncover every juicy detail. It continues to say, DailyMail.com contact the city of Laverne for comment. Powell is suing the city after claiming he was fired while his white colleagues, keep that in mind, keep that in mind, while his white colleagues were allowed to stay on the force because of his race. Oh, so they got rid of the black guy. Now, all of them were sleeping around. All of them were on duty doing all of this. All of them were doing that. All of them were having their way with her. She was enjoying all of them, but they got the black guy out of there. They like, oh, all you Negroes, y'all got to go. All of y'all. The white boys can stay, though. Hmm. That's interesting. It says, he is suing the city, the mayor, Jason Cole, Laverne HR director, Andrew Patton, and former police chief Chip Davis for racial discrimination, claiming three million dollars in damages as well as front and back pay get your money brother get your money if she can get her money you can get your money i mean what you did was wrong but if she got paid for it I, mm, i'd go for it too I, i'm rooting for you brother get your money man get your money continues to say the complaint alleges that the city terminated and defamed all the officers involved except for those who were white and male, based at least partly on racial prejudice. 
at least partly. At least partly. How was it at least partly when the only difference is race? You say race and male. Was there another female involved? Another female officer involved? No, it's just because you're a Negro. At least partly, I guess. No, it's, it's clear as day what it is. All right. Continues. The raft of firings and disciplinary measures triggered by Hall's antics meant that Laverne's population, 39,000, lost 12 percent of its police manpower overnight. You mean to tell me this woman slept with 12 percent of the city's police? She slept with 12% of the city's police. And that's only the ones that they let you know about. Because she only slept with them. And then there's videos of her doing what she need to do. Apparently, folks get free discounts and links to her OnlyFans. It says, Petite Hall grew up in rural Tennessee, dreaming to become an actress but eventually found her calling in law enforcement, a career that barely lasted two years. Despite his wife's infidelities, she and Jehenda, well, these are some very interesting names y'all got in Tennessee. Laverne, Tennessee, y'all have very interesting names. At first, I thought it was just the last names. It's the first names and the last names. She and, uh, and I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. She and Jehenda are still living together at their home in Manchester, 60 miles south of Nashville, their first marital property, which they bought a year ago. Oh, this man still has not left. This man still has not left. This man, okay. All right, all right. Continues to say the couple have been sweethearts since their college days and got married in November 2018. Quote, I don't know how he's doing it, He's more of a man than I am, but he's trying to salvage his marriage. Jadidas boss, Coffee County Sheriff Chad Pardon, told DailyMail.com last month. Now, if you thought that that was crazy, wait till you find out exactly how she was caught. Just, just listen to how she was caught. So through the course of the investigation, I have had others report to me that you and Officer Powell have been together, specifically performing oral sex while on duty at the police substation. I'm sorry, what? That's, that's the information that I was given early on to start the investigation. So that, that answers the question of, you know, how, why is it affecting city employment? Because the information I had was that it was happening while on duty in city property. And I have had that confirmed through the investigation so far. I'm not done. I'm not that's, I haven't spoken to you, but that's why it's a city issue, right? Which brings to light then any other relationship. That's why we're looking at it holistically. But the concern was raised because it was reported to be happening on shift in the city owned building. Help, help me under, like, I, I wasn't there. I don't know if it took place or not. I'm just here to try to understand why and how that's being reported. Can I ask who would have first reported that? Um, first off, that sounds very guilty. The whole, if it didn't happen, I'd be like, um, no, that didn't happen. Then you would say, okay, who said that to you? But who, what, who said that? Like, okay, all right, mm, not doing well. Let's continue though. Um, I can't answer that at this point because the investigation is still open and ongoing. So those conversations okay. are still confidential. Okay. Is there a reason that they would assume that or bring that up at all? The the confirmation on the act, I have been told, came directly from you to the person who reported it to me. That you talked about the act. You talked about his size, what it looked like. Is there any evidence of that? So that's what tipped them off. What tipped them off was her. She was doing it. And then she was going around telling everybody she was brought. Now, does this sound like 
a person who was groomed into she's a grown woman she's not a child she's a grown woman these officers are older yes but she's still a grown woman who's married does this sound like someone who was groomed into it because she's doing this with her and then all these other officers we don't know how these other officers got involved but she's doing this with all of them and now she's going to sit here and brag about because that's how she got caught she got caught by bragging about the situation that's that's exactly how she got caught bragging about what it looked like what it i guess what it felt like tastes like all that stuff she's sitting up there just uh, essentially telling people yeah we was on duty and we went in the back room and i did da, 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 he da, 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 and then bam wham bam thank you ma'am that's what she was saying she was doing on duty so all of this was her fault because she was bragging about uh, having an affair with other police officers and at the end of the day she got paid half a million dollars for it now, there's a lot I have to say about this situation. The first thing I want to acknowledge is the racial situation. I want to acknowledge the racial undertone in this situation. The black officers were doing the same thing their non-black white counterparts were doing, and the non-black white counterparts are not as punished as the black officers. And I want this message to go out there because there's a lot of black officers, gotta keep it real, it's a lot of black officers who sit here and act like their badge or their uh, uh, occupation, their uh, rank or whatever the case may be, puts them ahead of being black. And you realize that, okay, so you know you are a Negro. So you know you a Negro, that's it. You know you a Negro, that's it. OK, that's before your job. That's before your position. That's before your status. That's before your class. That's before your money. That's before all of those things. You are a Negro. You're going to be treated differently despite doing the same thing everybody else is doing. You're going to be over punished. You're going to be more severely punished for it. So that's what brings me back to the lawsuit. I feel like if she gets half a million dollars and he's suing for three million dollars, he should get something. Because she she was clearly complicit with everything. You can't tell me anything different. She was clearly complicit with every single thing the entire way through. I don't believe she was tricked for one bit. I don't believe that. And if she got paid, he should get paid too. That, that, that That's really the truth. And I'm not saying that any of them should get paid. I don't believe they all shouldn't get paid, to be very, very honest. They were all very wrong. But if you're going to pay them, and then if you're going to let the white colleagues, the white officers, if you're going to let them slide with a slap on the wrist, you're going to have to up the money for him. You're going to have to cut the check for him. Hey, I'm, I'm with that. Cut the check for him. Even though you can say, well, he doesn't deserve it. Maybe, but she got it. So she got it. You got to be fair. You got to give it to him because you're not punishing them. You're not punishing her. She was just as unprofessional as her male counterparts, and she's getting rewarded. His lawsuit, it was based off the fact that he was disproportionately punished in comparison to the white colleagues. But the thing is, is that she was rewarded and is now being treated like the victim of the situation, which we all know she wasn't. And that leads me to another situation. These snow bunnies, y'all, these snow bunnies, y'all, y'all clearly don't learn. Y'all are very thick headed. Don't learn. All right. Y'all thinking that your your position at your job or your money or your status, you think that that protects you. It doesn't protect you. You can look at this situation. You can look at the situation with Jonathan Majors. You can look at many different situations. It doesn't take, they don't need to tell the truth. They, their story doesn't even need to sound like it's the truth. Let me repeat that. Their story doesn't even need to sound as if it's the truth. It's all they have to do is say it. All they have to do is say for somehow in some way, I was done wrong by this black man. That's all they have to say. Bam, she wins. Bam, it's over. Bam, pay her. Bam, punish him. That's it. That's it. And there's cases after cases after cases of these situations. And too often, y'all think that just because she's down with the brothers or she got some jungle fever going on at the moment, you guys don't think 
that she's always going to have, the snow bunnies always are going to have a path to redemption. You as a Negro, you don't have no path to redemption. You don't get a second chance. You don't get to come back and say, guys, I know I was doing this for all this time and it was really wrong and it was kind of illegal, arguably, but I was the one who was taking advantage of, she took advantage of me and my situation. You can't do that. She can do that though. Now, if she was black, she wouldn't be able to do that. Let me, if she was black, if this was a black woman and these were white officers, she wouldn't be able to get away with, I, I was distraught and I was depressed, I guess. I, I don't know what I was doing. She wouldn't be able to get away with that at all. At all. She wouldn't be able to get away with that. But the races are reversed, so she's able to get away with that. And all they have to do is just pick up a phone. All they have to do is tell somebody, this Negro did me wrong. I don't have, my story don't have to add up. It doesn't have to make sense. The evidence can contradict my story. It can contradict it. And it's still, well, I, I mean, I'm, I'm white and I say so. And I said, he did me wrong. Bam, you're punished. It's over for you. This is the reality that we live in. And a lot of these black cops think that their badge, their occupation puts them in like a segregated class away from black society. They feel as if they're less black. They're less of a Negro. They're going to be treated with a, a special grade in comparison to the rest of the community because they have this, this little police badge and they have a little police walkie talkie. That, that's, that's honestly how they feel. They see themselves as the being closer to being white by being an officer. A lot of people in the certain fields feel like their fields give them cloak because it gives them maybe closer access they're more frequently around them they feel like they're they're becoming a part of them a lot of them do and a lot of officers fall for that i mean the fact this girl really this girl and you're sitting up there now you did the the short end of the stick now you the butt of the joke now you're fired now your reputation is ruined try to go to any other department with that type of reputation reputation that you're a predator because that's what she's calling you even though she's a grown married woman who was co clearly complicit with everything she was doing the whole time, she's calling you the predator because she's saying you started it. We don't even know that. Even though she was the one bragging about the situation, she was bragging about the situation, but she's calling you a predator. So why don't you, now you try a predator overall, uh, a short little white girl. Try to go somewhere else with that. Try to go to another department with that type of reputation, big black guy. Try to do that. You can't go anywhere with that anymore. So you got to think you are a Negro before everything else, any and everything else. I also want to get to the fact that when people make the argument, we need police and police do such great detective work and society wouldn't be the same without police. And we got to give more police money. We get give police more money and more money and more money. When we see situations like this, this happens way often than what is exposed. This happens very frequently, not just in Texas. This happens all throughout the nation. And it's been happening for years. A lot of times, and people don't want to talk about this, a lot of times these police actually do it with citizens and it's not consensual. Okay. But that's really another subject, but you're talking about giving police more money and we need to praise the police and back the badge and back the blue and all of this stuff. Y'all looking real bad right now because this is on taxpayer dime. It would be another story if she was just having an affair on her husband, but it wasn't on taxpayer dime. This is on taxpayer dime. So, and, and this happens all the time too. So your argument that though these police are sworn to protect and serve, I mean, she was serving, she, she was serving, she was serving. She, she wasn't doing too much protecting. I don't know if they had protection, but she wasn't doing any protecting, but she was serving. But that's, I don't think that that's how they're supposed to be doing it, especially on taxpayer dime. So anytime people want to make the argument that police are so great and need, they need more money, more money to do what? Bang each other in the, in the back office with lap dances and, and uh, strip uno or whatever they're playing? Is that what they need? Yeah, the back the blanche crowd is looking real bad right now.
family. Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below, please. Let me know, do you think that she deserves this lawsuit, that she was groomed? Do you think that he deserves this lawsuit because he was racially targeted? Let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section below. Also, you should be following me on my various social media platforms, which is Afro Elite on Instagram and then The Afro Elite on Twitter. And the links to both of those are in the description below. Please, before you all leave, do not forget to hit that like button, that subscribe button, and the notification bell. That all helps with the algorithm. Hit that uh, share button as well, too. That helps with the algorithm. Everything you all do helps the reach and the growth of the channel. And for everything, thank you so very much. Now, with that being said, be one salute to every single last one of you all. And of course, you all have a good one.